What's up guys, it's Dom Matter here, and today we're going to be reacting to the Conspiracy Theory Iceberg, part 7, 3 out of 3. So we've reacted to the first 6 parts, we've reacted to the first 2 thirds of part 7, and now we're on to the third part of part 7. I think this is out of 9, so we're actually getting near the end of the Conspiracy Theory Pyramid, or the Conspiracy Theory Iceberg. Uh, this has been one of the longest running series I've done on here in terms of length of video and how much time it's taken me to react to these. I mean, almost every one of these has taken me about an hour. So, and they've been two to, th so I probably put like 24 hours in just to react to all these different videos over the course of the past month or so, which is kind of insane. Um, but anyway, this is by Wendigoon, as all of these are. Link to the original video down below. Remember to like, comment, subscribe to help the algorithm, and let's jump into it. Conspiracy Theory Iceberg. First things first, I just did a collaboration with Scrabble, who is a YouTuber who he and I became close because we both started at about the same time. And he is an excellent YouTuber, way better editing than me. And I wanted to make sure that some people go and check out his channel because I really do mean it. He is not only a great guy, but a great creator too. A lot of people have asked me to do collaborations as of late, and I just want to like put it out there that uh, I do this. I'm a full-time college student. I have personal relationships I try to keep up with, so I'm pulled pretty thin as is. So for the most part, I can't just, you know, say yes to everyone who asks because, and I don't mean this to be braggadocious at all, just if I took the time to be a part of everyone's video who asked, there'd be like no time for this or something else in my life. So I really do have to pick and choose who it is, but Scrabble is a good friend who was very encouraging to me when I first started, so I wanted to do the same for him. So if you're interested, it's a great video about childhood trauma. Check it out, link in the description below. And other than that, there's not really anything to bring up besides this. I am absolutely blown away by the fact it is here. Uh, it's physical, I can look, I can touch it, I'm touching it. it it's, it's so cool and it's all thanks to you guys. I'm uh, sure YouTube was 100,000 late, um, <laughs> which is so ironic, but I, I just love you all so much and now I can like hold it. Man, that's actually crazy because when we, I think we were on part five, maybe part six, and he was talking about how insane it was that he was up to 4,000 subs, which is barely more than I have. And just a few videos later, although to be fair, he does really good videos and puts a, like, a lot more effort than I do. I sit here and just react to shit. Occasionally I'll make gaming videos, which I do a little bit of editing, but even that I don't really edit that much. Um, and it just skyrocket with the numbers and he deserves it these are really interesting videos i really like watching them that i can touch it and this is because of you guys and the fact that it's here with me is all thanks to you and it means the most like when i started this series that you're watching right now i was at i think 800 subscribers and look we're not even done with the seventh part of the 10 part series and i've got the plaque and i've got double the amount and it's all thanks to you guys, so I sincerely mean it. Thank you so much. We're gonna christen this thing, so mwah. And sorry, Travis. Right there, cool. So let's go ahead and get into the theories to finish out part seven, but as always, thank you for watching. Moon built by aliens is exactly what it says. The idea that the moon was built by aliens. I kind of mentioned this whenever I talked about the prison earth concept, that, that idea of the moon being artificial kind of ties into it, but this is the more specific version. So for starters, it's an anomaly in itself that the moon exists as it does. Given a planet of our size, our moon should be about 40 miles long, whereas our moon is more like 2,000. Not only that, but there's structures on the moon that don't make a lot of sense that have even had the name coined of shadow structures, which are supposedly artificial monoliths and things created on the moon as a sort of beacon or marker. Not only that, but seismic testing on the moon has shown that it takes up approximately 2% of the Earth's volume, which is way less than it should given its size. This implies, again, that the moon might be hollow. Hollow moon theory. Now if we tie that back into the ancient aliens concept, the Zulu people had a legend that- So doesn't hollow moon theory kind of undermine hollow earth theory though? Because if, you know, we're going by the, those measurements, then, or maybe they're just faking the measurements, you know. Yeah, I, I feel like that's it. They're faking the Earth measurements. They really know that they're both hollow. The moon was a great egg 
that was brought down to earth and cracked open which people came out of and then was set back up in the sky and closed together and going in line with the ancient aliens theory if a race came down to earth and did something similar and then ascended back to the moon that's where the legend may have came from protein qrd 4151 is a theory that there is a specific protein in the human genome that determines everything about the person it inhabits. Supposedly, the protein has had a lot of research that's been done to it, silenced by big science and big pharma. Some theories about this relate to the idea that potentially the protein is the indicator of how much a human can connect to the spiritual realm around them. And there's other theories of it that range from everything to adaptability to race theory. So yeah, 2012 Mayan prophecy shift comes from the idea that the 2012 end of the world from the Mayan calendar is just a misconception. In actuality, the Mayan calendar... So it actually is a misconception. Um, in, in, in reality, it was the end of a cycle for the Mayans. They had like different cycles. Some of them were like 12,000 years, 144,000 years, a bunch of different cycles. Um, but funnily enough, one of my cousins was actually so convinced that the world was going to end in 2012. We were still in high school at the time. Uh, I think I was in grade... 10 or 11 i can't remember exactly and he was a year older than me so he was in grade 11 or 12 and he just stopped going to school because he was convinced the world was going to end all he did was sit at home hang out with his girlfriend smoke weed play video games he was 100 percent convinced the world was going to end like dead on he was like he his mom was like hardcore and like you know with those reiki crystals and all that shit so a lot of that was like her putting that shit in his head but yeah he was convinced the world was going to end like he was 100 percent sold on that never ended at 2012 as researchers have equated it to just because your calendar ends at december 31st doesn't mean the world ends it just means you need to get a new calendar which is the same situation that happened with the mayans they just built so far into the future that doesn't mean that they said the end of the world was coming that just means that's as big of a calendar as they made and also given the way our calendars worked it wouldn't have been 2012 when their calendar ended. It would have been more like 2028. So don't worry, we could all still die. Aeromorphous PSYOPs. Um, so if you don't know what Aeromorphous is, I'm not going to be the one to show you. But it's rule 34 for animated planes. Oh, I've seen anyway, shit like that. So people, the theory is... People always post shit like that on, like, Twitter and stuff. You'll, like, just be scrolling through the comments on somebody's tweet, and you'll see that, or the fucking... The Cars, like the Pixar movie. Bro. Yeah. No, we... we this is why we need to, like... Lock those people up. <laughs> that those images were put online in order to sexualized aircraft to encourage the United States people to be more pro-war <laughs> and encourage spending on aircraft, <laughs> meaning it's state-sanctioned airplane kit. <laughs> I, love, I love these series so much because the idea that there was like a CIA agent sitting inside of the Pentagon and some general was like, how can we get these kids into bombing Syria? <laughs> And some dude in a suit's like, I got an idea. Disneyland Secret Tunnels is in itself not a theory and is an actual system of tunnels that exists beneath Disneyland. Also known as the Utilidors, which stands for Utility Corridors, they were supposedly theorized by Walt Disney himself, who whenever he was in the Tomorrowland section of his park, saw a character walking through in a cowboy costume to get from one job to the other, and said it really took the magic out of it seeing someone in a spot they're not supposed to be. So instead, they built tunnels underneath Disneyland as a means of transportation for workers. These things have expanded to now they are storage, they are security, there's cafeterias, and even a hairdresser shop. If you get a behind the scenes tour at Disneyland, you can even see a portion of these tunnels which are color coded as a means to let people know which attraction they're walking towards. However, the theories cool. come from the fact that these tunnels are about 400,000 square feet, and with many of them not being mapped to public knowledge and disappearances occurring at Disney, and all the accusations of Disneyland with greater Illuminati conspiracies, you can figure out where they go from there. Because if there's miles worth of secret tunnels underneath a super rich multinational corporation's amusement park, of course there's going to be theories on it. Abaca alignment. So they, they just like freeze him with Walt? I guess Walt got unfrozen, didn't he? I'm pretty sure that somebody pulled the plug on him because they didn't like him. 
Let me double check that, but I'm pretty sure that ended up happening. Not with Walt Harris, no, Walt Disney. Got UFC on the brain, apparently. Let's see. Life, death, and aftermath. Um... Where is it? Cryo. Oh. Oh, apparently he was never even frozen. It was a myth. Okay, well. I guess that's definitely a myth that he was, uh, you know, unfrozen. Or maybe that's just what his daughter wanted us to think. It is the term used to describe the arrangement of the Egyptian pyramids. There's a lot of belief within the ideas of sacred geometry or the idea that shapes hold particular meaning that they were arranged in such this way as a tribute to some sort of god, although it's never specifically said within their religion that we can find. What is interesting is during the initial overlooks of the moon, Russian spaceship Luna 9 and American spaceship Orbiter 2 caught interesting pictures of something on the dark side of the moon. After analyzing these images, they seem to be some of the shadow structures which I talked about earlier. So, supposedly artificial bodies on the moon, and they were arranged in the perfect shape of the pyramids in Egypt, following the Abaka alignment. So, did something from the moon come to Egypt and have them build the pyramids like their thing on the moon? Or did something from the moon see the pyramids and then build them to match? I personally like the second one because the ideas of aliens seeing our pyramids and structures we built and then trying to do them themselves is kind of cute. Bacterial humanity is the idea that humans themselves... I feel like if, if aliens are able to... You know, maybe they, the only reason I could see them doing that was to maybe fuck with us. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, by the time they get here in a couple thousand years, they'll be so fucking confused exist as a sort of bacteria. The theory sort of works like this. Imagine the Earth as the host, which is a living, breathing organism. We ourselves work as the bacteria or the infection using the resources of the host in order to sustain ourselves. Naturally, the host produces antibodies, as a means to kill the bacteria, which is everything on Earth that kills us. But we, as an infection, continue to grow and grow and repopulate and adapt to such a point we don't have to worry about the host defense mechanisms anymore. I, man, I hate theories like this. They're so fucking cringe. Because here's the thing. No matter what you do to the Earth, it'll always be livable for something. It just might not be livable for humans. Right? Life will find a way. Whether it's human life or not is the factor. Right? We can pollute as much as we want, we can you know, use as much carbon as we want, all this nonsense, and it'll fuck up the earth for us, but other stuff will thrive, and new stuff will evolve, and it's, it's, like, it's kind of ironic, because it calls humans egotistical while also being simultaneously massive ego, like, egotists, right? The, the people that have this kind of theory are, are right about humans being egotistical, but they need to hold up a mirror and look at themselves when they're talking about this because life will find a way, just you might not. Anymore. So, as bacterial infections do, it will eventually get to a point in which we kill the hosts, therefore killing ourselves. So, big overall analogy, humans bad, earth good. Yeah. Ancient glyphs on Saturn's moons is interesting. So, Saturn's moons have always been pretty odd in the realm of astronomy. Like, not only are there a ton of them, but they're incredibly diverse in what their surface pertains. Again, this all ties back into ancient aliens, but the most interesting thing about all this to me is there are two moons that have these very odd geographic markings on them that scientists can't really explain that look like this, and they can't really be explained as old water systems like they can on Mars because there's not really tributaries and it doesn't look like the way water would flow. And general consensus is that they seem to be giant claw marks. I've got no theory for that, no jokes. That's the most terrifying, cool thing I've ever heard. Like a giant space eagle clawed two of Saturn's moons. Oh my gosh. That is some dead space HP Lovecraft material, and I for one am here for it. The Charlie Project. Yeah, the, I had si never heard of the size of something that would have to be able to do that would be just immense. It would have like its own gravitational force. And how would it stay alive in space? Like it would, well, I guess it doesn't necessarily need oxygen because that would assume that it's, you know, life like us. But yeah. Before researching for this video, but I'm glad I do now. Starting by Megan Good in 2004, it is a database of every cold case missing persons file in the United States, usually existing at more than 14,000. 
there's nothing that the site can really do to find these missing people but it is a massive database for missing people in general what normally happens after someone goes missing is the news and local police kind of stop the search for it so megan created this site as a means of maintaining some form of information about them the cold cases on there date all the way from now to 1910. it exists not only as a database for investigators as most are exclusive to but also for any individual to look up and read. I for one went on there and clicked on a few stories of people local to my area in which it gives their last known location, details about them and what they were seen doing, and some of them are rather haunting. I may do a video about this site because they exist off of donations and I think it's an important and useful database, so stay tuned for that but uh, I'm glad I know about the Charlie Project. I think it's something that's worth your time if you're interested, and as a matter of fact, I'll link it below next to the Scrabble video. Grain situation. Why is that a conspiracy theory? I mean, that's just a, you know, good website that somebody made. I wonder what the conspiracy theory is around that. Situation is another apocalypse theory. The idea being that across the world, we've created all of these modified crops in order to feed people on a mass scale. These modified crops are resistant to everything from pesticide, insects, dehydration, natural competition, so on and so forth. So what would happen if one of these super plants ever decided to become competitive itself? What if a specific grass plant began to kill all the grass plant in its area and grow out and out and out until it eventually dominates not only its ecosystem but ecosystems around it? The idea being it could eventually progress to the point where it kills out several species as it maintains domination and eventually leads from everything to famines, fires, and in one long theory I read, even an ice age due to the mix of carbon emissions that would happen. So humans tried to make super plant to feed themselves, dust to dust, blah blah blah. Earth is bigger than the sun, um, nope. No. The idea behind this is that the whole sun being bigger is a psyop, and like the governments have coordinated with spacecraft and all of that to just tell us that the sun is bigger what would they gain from for that? some reason and it all goes back <laughs> to the core belief of the conspiracy theory mantra which is seen is believing so if you didn't see it it's not real Astro high command comes from supposed contact people have made with aliens through something called channels channels are essentially people who believe that they have been given messages from extraterrestrials and then they use that information to convey to others in order to proliferate whatever the alien said. George Von Tessel is probably the most famous example of this, as in 1953 he said he received messages from a being known as Ashtar and started a movement off of those messages. He began an organization known as the Ministry of Universal Wisdom, who essentially worked as a centralized hub for people who either believed in UFOs or made contact with them. Von Tessel began by reinterpreting the Bible through the eyes of what Asher had told him and came to conclusions such as Jesus Christ was an ET. Researching this stuff, <laughs> the lore is expansive. Jesus phone home. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Oh my God. And those even surprise man. It feels like as we get further down this, it's just like schizo posting. It's mostly what it is, is like schizo posting. Like, there are stories of these massive star fleets that Astra uses, as well as the history of their race of people, and yada, yada, yada. It goes on for a while, but this is basically a large group come together under this one belief of one alien super race. Ocean doesn't exist. <laughs> Same as the sun being smaller than the earth. Um, nope. I <laughs> that one's funny, because I've literally been in the fucking ocean before. <laughs> There's gotta be like some dude from the fucking Midwest or something that made that one. He lives in fucking Nebraska. He's just like, yeah, I don't believe in the ocean. I don't know, I'm doing a southern accent for him, but fuck me. The ocean doesn't exist. I wish uh, that would make me sleep a lot easier at night. One theory on this did kind of work as a theory. It's the idea that the ocean actually doesn't have a bottom, and instead there is a gravitational center within the Earth that the ocean waters interflow and connect with each other, so technically the ocean is unlimited and underneath every continent. However, most research with this is just saying that it's a psyop, and it's like, well, have you ever went from one side of the ocean to the other and kept track that you weren't 
flipped around or whatever so you're just in a really big lake which i mean technically yeah i guess the ocean is a really big lake but you get the point point. and if you did cross the ocean and keep track well i guess you're just in on it fed it's another yeah, one of those fed. i didn't see it therefore it's not true things geometric algorithm yeah <laughs> Fucking all uh, all ship captains are feds the true conspiracy theory anyone that's on a cruiser anyone that owns a fishing boat my, my fucking grandpa used to have a boat. My dad used to have a boat. They're both feds. As my dad never technically ro drove his boat, so maybe, you know, maybe he wasn't allowed in on the fed stuff. He just got the thing and then never used it. He sat in our driveway for like five years until he sold it. <laughs> he is referring to the fact that in geometry, there are certain patterns that begin to show up more and more often. For example, if you're trying to diagram how energy will react in a sort of vacuum or environment, it often comes out in a sort of ellipsis shape. There's beliefs that this is the reason the ellipsis is used as the symbol for infinity or the afterlife or what have you. And this theory goes on to say, well, our universe is made to be shaped like a thermodynamic reaction or the entire solar system itself is made to look like a man or this all relates back to the ideas of sacred geometry and the idea that our greater plane of existence around us manifests itself through shapes. Morali de spiral which, close enough, also known as the Spiral, references the artist and architect Fredrinsreich Hunter Wasser, who was known for his idea that straight lines were awful in art, represented no creativity, and you should never use them. This again kind of relates to the idea of sacred geometry, as Hunter Wasser kind of viewed the ideas of free-flowing lines as an expression of life itself. However, what's interesting about this, so if you imagine free-flowing lines as they travel roundabout as an expression of life and carelessness, then a spiral would be life inevitably making itself towards one point that it can't escape. Basically the idea that in his artwork, the spiral was the symbol for death or the inevitable. And as his artwork goes on, you can see spirals being incorporated more and more into his works. The idea that through his artwork, we can see how he began to recognize the inevitability of where he'd end up. So if this idea of free thinking geometry as a means of representing life is true, then a spiral could be used as a symbol of not only death and the inevitable, but an omen of badness itself. So some people have taken this idea and adapted it to the idea that spirals themselves are bad juju and you shouldn't look at them or have one around you. So again, if we apply this to the last concept of shortcuts and see that the Milky Way is a spiral galaxy, then what is that supposed to mean? Bioma over genome <laughs> is saying that perhaps the biology within your body or the bacteria inside of you are more important than your actual genes. This has actually been theorized for a while. In 2007, the Human Microbiome Project was put together to experiment on this very concept. It's actually somewhat true. I mean, they've done uh, studies on this, which I think he's about to half-ass talk about. Um, but they've, they've done studies on this where, uh, you know, your gut biome specifically, I don't know about the, the rest of your biome, but your gut biome specifically, if they do you know, transplants and take some of your bacteria out of some out of you and put somebody else's who eats a healthier diet, you will actually crave healthier foods. Uh, a lot of the time, you know, like what gut biomes survive and thrive in your body is based on what foods you eat. So that's why a lot of the time, if you just switch up your diet, there's a lot of foods you won't find tasty, but after you've been eating them for a long time, you'll start to find them more and more tasty because that's what the, those gut bacteria will start to thrive more and then the ones that, you know, are into unhealthy food will die off. Um, it's really interesting to look into. Concept. And while it's not true, the whole myth that there's more bacteria cells in your body than there are human cells in your body, there certainly are a lot. And since bacteria play a huge role in not only fending off disease, but performing metabolic processes within the body, then maybe there is some credence to the fact that it doesn't necessarily matter how you're born, but more so what you take in afterwards. This would explain the reason that sometimes children who are protected from the world around them and aren't allowed to interact with the bacteria develop diseases later in life because they don't have a healthy immune system. Not because of tolerance or anything like that as most people think, but because they just simply need more bacteria as a means of helping their own system. Hive mind induction is a theory behind how I mean, that's, we make that's kind of tolerance just by another name. Be now 
working our way towards a hive mind. The idea being that we are currently laying the groundwork for what will later become a massive conglomerate of thought. This is done through media and other sources around us trying to push us all towards knowing everything that's currently going on, or in other words, making sure we're all on the same page with the information dump that's given to us daily. Whereas the next step would be a unified thought, which some argue the media is already it's pushing its way for, and this would all inevitably end to Elon Musk shooting us in the brain with a super chip that connects all of our thoughts together and we become one giant planet thing. Sort of similarly related. Is so uh, I kind of half ass agree with that, except I would say th there's a couple things that I, I would disagree with that. Like, I definitely, s you can kind of see that politically in some sense, especially I would say since the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, there's been this, it, it's kind of been like a bifurcation almost, right? Mainstream politics, the Overton window has gotten much smaller. It's shifted from what it used to be, but it's also gotten much smaller. Um, but when it comes to just general stuff that that you know people outside the mainstream talk about, that field has gotten way bigger. Um, but yeah, obviously, like in some sense, because of all this knowledge has been packed onto the internet, you have access to so much knowledge that was just unavailable a decade, two decades, three decades ago to the average person unless they were going to spend their life in a library, whereas now it's just, you know, you've got your phone in your hand and you can look anything up, like, super quickly. So it's kind of true, kind of not, I guess, that one, right? Is the idea of field consciousness. So for those that don't know, consciousness is kind of an anomaly in science. While we understand where thoughts come from and ideas, the factor of consciousness itself and the things that make up us as a person are kind of a mystery. Like for example, there's no space in your brain for memory, or at least none that we can find. So the idea behind field consciousness is like a field in physics, around us sort of exists this ethereal anatomy of what our consciousness is that we pull from whenever we need it. And that's where memory and higher order thought come from. This would also give credence to the theory that I mentioned however many tiers back, that humans sort of learn as a collective. So whenever someone learns one capability, the person next to them is more likely to learn it. Or the idea that as soon as someone breaks a record in something, more people begin to break that record rapidly. So not only are your thoughts and memories out there for you to gain access from, but others, even if involuntarily, are able to do the same. This could also be seen as an explanation for seemingly random or unknown memories and deja vu. Chaos. So the reason I don't think that's true is because there's a combination of factors on why records get beaten rapidly, right? Or once somebody breaks a record, more people get it. One is that people realize it's possible, so you're going to have more people attempting to achieve it. Two is just population growth, right? We've had continual population growth now for the last like 150 years, going from like 500 million people to like 8 billion or whatever right now. So if you were, uh, you know, the best in the world, you were one in 500 million. If you're the best in the world now, you're one in 8 billion, right? So the 16 times more the population means you're going to have 16 times as many people that are able to do something. Uh, and then three, you have technological advancement, which allow us to break records more often, whether it be like better understanding of nutrition, better understanding of, um, you know, physics, whatever it is. And then the other one is any anything that somebody like understands, which kind of, this kind of links into three, anything they learn they can pass on to other people. So I think it's a combination of factors that leads to that uh, and not so much just some ethereal psychobabble. Banking is a wild concept. I'm going to do my best to explain it. So the theory goes in line with the idea that eventually we will get to the point that we run out of physical materials to trade for currency. So we'll quit that and then we'll move into trading like electricity and energy and then we'll run out of that and eventually get to such a point as an existence of whatever being we are at that point in future that we trade temporal anomalies. And the thing that would be traded as a temporal anomaly is chaos, or in other words, anomalies themselves as they exist throughout time. So assuming at that point in the future they've managed to manipulate or go back to time in some way, those beings in the future could be cashing in on the currency that is chaos right now. So think of it this way, you're going about your life normally and then something out of the usual happens. That creates a bit of temporal chaos. These beings from the future use that chaos as part of their banking system. Now go a step further and say seemingly totally random, supernatural, everything from UFOs to ghosts could just be these things from the future sort of mining <laughs> our presence in order to create more temporal cash. 
If this theory that in the future temporal energy can be harnessed for whatever reason, then slight alterations in the timeline as a means of producing energy or wealth could be utilized. So Man, that's just straight up a schizo post. That is 100% a schizo post. Because here's, here's the thing, if you have any, you'd have the, the amount of energy you'd have to go to go back in time, why are you not trading that, right? How did you run out of energy if you have the energy to go back in time? Not to mention that we have this ever-expanding universe, assuming that we're able to continue on and beat the Great Filter and, you know, go on to spread throughout the stars. We're just going to have endless access to resources eventually. So random things that happen to you aren't actually random. They are just a race of super people, eons in the future, using it to profit at your expense. So... There's nothing you can do about it. Doom ecology is accelerationism applied to ecology. The idea is that we are constantly hurting the earth. So what we need to do is We're rapidly not. accelerate this hurting of the earth so that the earth can begin to kill us off. And then we can worry about the next steps. The core belief in acceleration. So yeah, the, uh, we're not hurting the earth. We're hurting ourselves, right? Anything we do to the earth, the earth, the earth will be fine. It'll change, it'll evolve. Like, it's been, like, 40 degrees hotter in the past, and, like, we've gone through ice ages and stuff like that. Humans may die. The Earth will be fine. There will be life. It just won't be us. It's, it's what I hate about these fucking, like, ecology doomer shit. I mean, this one, at least, is accelerationist, but so it kind of understands that, but it still has that, like, we're killing the Earth. We're killing the Earth. No, we're not. We can't. Accelerationism, as it's tied to politics, is the idea that we can't make any progress while we're heading down here. I know you dream of glamping oh. under the northern light. I really need to get YouTube red. I, I keep saying that, I keep not getting it. Jump to the bottom so we can begin to work our way back up. This is that only with nature. So we need to jump to the mass extinction event of humanity and then we can start to rebuild. So we might as well get it over with while we're here. Kim IRL is in reference to the Kim thing from Elder Scrolls, which is sort of escaping your human body. And this is mostly just a joke or misinformation on here, as I've talked about earlier. However, I did find one Reddit thread in which the person recommended that they should wear dark clothes and grow out all the hair on their face and that'll do it, so. Okay. Tomoko Umaya is one of the channels for extraterrestrials, which I talked about earlier, who began writing books in 1994. Supposedly, he has made contact with several extraterrestrial bodies and has written many books about these altercations. There's a lot of expansive stuff he gets into in his work, with most of it being ideas of how aliens have affected us through human history, and the idea that there will be great terraforming events for the aliens to do things i guess and he exists as a modern example of a channel nuclear grid theory is the concept of ley lines applied to nuclear science for those that don't know ley lines is the idea that across the earth there are these natural magnetic centers that sort of flow as they travel around the globe a lot of the theories with them say that ancient civilizations purposefully place their structures and temples on these ley lines even if they weren't conscious of it as some sort of greater spiritual vision intended for them to or because it created more symbiosis or what have you. Supposedly after the nuclear strikes that occurred at the end of World War II they opened up a secondary set of ley lines. The idea being that such a massive energy expansion at once caused a sort of second plane of ley lines to be unfolded or we created enough energy to jump up to this next plane of being. And along this new set of ley lines... So the problem with that is that we've blown up way more way way more nukes and way more powerful nukes since then so either that every time we blown them up we would have opened up more and more and more ley lines or it just didn't happen ley lines supernatural events have taken place everything from ghost sightings to ufo sightings to bigfoot encounters and what have you basically the idea that the reason supernatural occurrences have proliferated so much in the 21st century and into the 20th century is because we sort of opened the door. And that is it for part three of tier seven of the conspiracy theory iceberg, and therefore the end of tier seven. Because there's Cum Ranger. Thank you guys so much. Fucking Cum Ranger. For this. Uh, it really does mean the most. Like, you guys rock getting me here. Like, look, look at that. Look at that silver plaque. I can't, I can't believe it. It's so cool. Uh, I've stared at that thing for like hours now. Uh, I just. It's, it's so amazing, and I'm so happy about it, and it's thanks to you guys, uh, and it really does mean the most, so thank you. Thank you, everyone.
um, thank you all for watching. Um, it really does mean the most, just the fact that you would click on this and spend your time to be here, and you're still listening now during the outro for Knights of the Round Planet. For the video of a guy you may have never seen before. Um, I'm just reading these names, this is hilarious. I'm just doing this because I enjoy it, and you, you guys rock, and it really does mean the most. So thank you to all my viewers. Thank you to all my subscribers. You guys are so cool. And thank you to all of my patrons. Look at all you beautiful people. Your name's scrolling by. I love you There's all There's so day. many of them. Um, thank you all. You're fantastic. I, I know I say thank you all the time, but really, you guys deserve it. That that wouldn't be here without you. I wouldn't be here still without you. And Boo Bear. You know what's funny? I actually knew this guy in high school, and he went by the name Boo. Well, I actually knew him from when we were younger. Um, but it, he always went by the name Boo. And the reason is because his mom used to call him Boo Bear, but nobody knew that. And then his brother, like, outed him for it, and it was so funny. He's a cool dude, though. He actually owns a gym around here now. It's all thanks to you guys. So, from me to you, thanks. I did another whiteboard video, which should be out in the next couple days. So, stay tuned for that if you're interested. As I all right, so that is it for that video. And, yeah, I feel like as we're getting... Like, we went from stuff that, like... I feel like tier one had the most conspiracies like so far of everything I've seen like I feel like the the tier one had like some conspiracies after that it was like a lot of scientific concepts and then now it's like I feel like most of these are just schizo posting like they're not even really conspiracies anymore I mean I guess you can kind of argue that they're conspiracies but they don't really feel like conspiracies they feel more like just schizo posting that's kind of what it feels like to me but anyway let me know what you think below like comment subscribe and I'll see you in the next one